Wow! Wherever you might be watching me from all over the world, a warm greeting to your heart. My name is Shio Akishon. I'm using this medium to introduce to you a powerful program on Safe Omega Media titled A Seed in Me. A Seed in Me. A Seed in Me. What is that seed in you that is yet to discover? Join me on this program to discuss on how we can discover the seed in us. A seed that can allow you to shine in life. According to the book of Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 says, Arise and shine for your glory has come. Without you discover the seed in you, you can never shine. Without you knowing how to grow your seed, you can never shine. Without you knowing how to nurture your seed, you can never shine. Without you knowing how to use your seed to impart life positive, you can never shine. Join me on every Wednesday at 6 p.m. prompt on Facebook Live at Safe Omega Media. Thank you and God bless you. But tell a friend to tell a friend. Thank you. For his good, for his wonderful, for his marvelous, for his masses endure it forever. Hello everyone, my name is Shion Akishon on a platform tag a seed in me on Facebook page Safe Omega. I'm here to um, welcome you to this wonderful program, a program where we want to discuss on how we can discover the great seed of God in us on how we can encourage one another on how to locate the seed of God in us and to use it to impart this word positive. Please stay tuned. I welcome you once again. And if you are willing to join us on this platform to share your experience uh, with other people, you can call us on this number 0203774-7220 or 0794278530. And if you have a question to ask my wonderful minister of God, that will be joining us to share her journey of locating her seed, please call the same number, which is 0203-774-7220 or 079-4278530. Can I ple uh, plead to you to please encourage other people by sharing this program on your platform, by inviting friends and family to join us this, on this program in order to benefit on it. Please stay tuned and God bless you. Um, I welcome you to this platform, Minister. God bless you, Ma. You are welcome to this platform. Thank you very much. Kindly introduce yourself to our viewers. Can you hear me, Ma? I can hear you. Kindly introduce yourself to our viewers. Thank you. My name is Oluwa Toyo Yewole, a gospel minister, by the very special grace of God. I minister in the Bible by studying the Bible and ministering to people, teaching the gospel in the way of the Lord by the help of the Holy Spirit. Thank you and God bless you. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. Oh, okay. Um, please kindly go to the source of your background. I would like you to... Okay. Okay. To stop I would like you to please um, introduce yourself to our viewers by going to your source 
I want you to discuss on how you um, start your journey, your Christian journey, and also your educational background. Please share with our viewers, ma'am. Right. Um, I will. I will. I will introduce myself and um, try to explain about my background, but the educational background there might be a little bit because it's been a long, it's been a long time, it's been a while. Uh, I'll just try to touch on. That's okay, ma. That's fine. Uh, um, at least to WAEC level. I did my work, and um, by the grace of God, I did um, another teacher training all the while, still not knowing where I'm heading, but I know that I, I appear to live among us for a purpose. Okay. Going up and down, trying to search for who I am, where I, where, uh, I fit in, I end up in uh, Bible, uh, no. Mm, teacher training school, and from there, um, I get into getting married, and from there, every education background stops. Okay. Thank you. Can you please tell us about your Christian background, please? I was born into a Christian home, going to church. We never miss a service on Sunday. We always go to church on Sunday. But it does not really give me the, um, the understanding of Christianity, of, of being a Christian, that we have to go to church. Because uh, my parents are Christian. So we go to church every Sunday. They all know it. we go to church every Sunday. Not until when I started growing up. Then, Till then, I, didn't know, I, I really don't understand uh, what is salvation or to be born again, but I keep going to church. And when I become a really matured, then some witness to me that um, you need Jesus in your life. You need uh, salvation. So I said, what, what do you mean by salvation? What's the meaning of salvation? Anyway, from there. He, he was able to persuade me to go to church where I, I gave my life to Christ. And that was where the journey started. Was that in, um, back in Africa or here in UK, ma? Here in UK. Okay. Carry on, ma. I'm listening, ma. Okay. So when I got born again, I started going to church. It was from there, from going to church. I don't know, I, um, but I believe, even, I mean, from my experience now, I can say that when you get born again, truly, truly, your spirit gets born again. Because when I got born again, um, I begin to see things in a different way, and I begin to my spirit begin to receive people and even preachers in a different way. It's like I'm having a bigger understanding, different understanding than who I was before. Then, even myself, I was questioning myself that I don't understand this. Is it real? Is it true? That was when I got studying my Bible. So when a preacher preaches, I go back to my Bible. So I get this interest of, I really want to know, where is this and what is, I, I mean, I even thought Jerusalem was in heaven. That mm -hmm. is how bad it was because I don't understand all these things. So I went to search that this Jerusalem, this heaven, is it in this Bible? I want to know. So from there, understanding begins to come. Okay. Then the Holy Spirit begins to work in me. 
And then I was a bit scared. I couldn't show up in the church. I mean, I couldn't get within other people. I'm like, am I strange? I mean, eh, what I'm hearing is this different from what other people are hearing. The more I do that, the more Holy Spirit takes me deeper, deeper, deeper into understanding. Then it became real that mm, I can no longer take all these teachings. I have to sit down and cite the scripture myself. And that was where I came up with a particular subject that people are, uh, I mean, people are fighting on today, which is tithing. It's not something that anybody tell me that, oh, you shouldn't pay your tithe. It came from my spirit. I received it personally. Nobody tells me that tithing is not good. No, I received it directly from the Holy Spirit when I got born again, newly fresh. It's not that the preacher preaches it. No. And I went down and studied it clearly. Then I began to see that it was then the passion of people being, I would say, I mean, permit me to use that word, that being duped with their money. So I couldn't tolerate it. I couldn't take it anymore. I see it whenever they tell, whenever they tell people to bring money, I feel like, no, it's their money. You shouldn't do that to them. I, went, I, I started taking it personal. But then when I keep on studying, I, I mean, I get to the depth of it that, no, it's, not, it's even deeper than that. It's about Gentiles and the church. So the Holy Spirit did a, a big work on me with that, that makes me to bring it out to the open. So um, during the journey of you accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior, um, that is when you understand the Holy Spirit, how it works. You understand the full of Holy Spirit and you understand how it works. Can you please explain to our viewers, how did you now discover the grace in you and what exactly is your sigma now the way uh, the way I discovered that is because of how I was before because now I can I mean I can relate to myself like mm, I wasn't like this before I don't even know I don't understand what is going on with me sometimes I I will hit myself like am I real until when I became more open to the scripture and listening also to, to preaching about the Holy Spirit himself, then I begin to study, then I begin to see that, yes, this is the Holy Spirit that me, because this is not me. I wasn't like this, I mean, I don't understand this, I don't have this understanding before, so this is the Holy Spirit at work. Then I studied the scripture also. And from Second uh, Corinthians 13 in, in particular, that speaks about uh, the tongue and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to mix it together, but it works together. It helps me to understand that this is the work of the Holy Spirit in me. I mean, if you can understand me. Yes, I can understand you. Can you please raise the volume a little bit? Hello, can you hear me, ma? Can you hear me now? Yes, just raise your voice up. Okay, fine. Thank you, ma. Okay, so that was how I begin to study and I see that when I'm studying, I mean, you can tell that when the Holy Spirit is at work, you can tell that, no, this is not the work of a man or this yes. is not your work. Being a Christian, if as, as, I mean, plus the Bible says that when we got born again, it is our spirit, our spirit, 
born again, which yeah. means the Holy Spirit has taken over. Mm -hmm. So that also helps me to know with so many scriptures that I go through, it helps me to know that the Holy Spirit is at work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God Almighty. Let me quickly speak to our viewers. Um, probably you are just joining us. We are on a platform tag, a seed in me, a, a platform to discuss on how we can locate the good seed of God in us, which is the talent or any uh, gift that God has deposited in us. This is a platform we want to discuss on how we can encourage one another on how we can locate the great seed in us. It could be anything. You might be a singer, you might be a drummer or instrumentalist, you might be an author, you might be um, a caterer, you might be a motivational speaker, you could be a nurse or you could be a doctor. This is a platform that is open to everyone to come and share your experience in the journey of your life or on how you discover your own seed in order to encourage other people. Because I was made to understand that every one of us have a great seed in us, a seed that is yet to be germinated and to be used to bless other people. But if we don't try to locate it, to search for it deeply, we may unable to even know that we have that seed in us. And it will be pending. Before you know it, it can't even just die there because we don't even recognize we have it in us. So we are not working on it. We are not nurturing it. We are not even using it. And definitely, it will just be there and it will be dead. Uh, this is a platform where we want to encourage every one of us in order to look into what God has deposited in us and also to encourage us on how we can nurture, how we can treat it, how we can make it better and use it in life so that we can be great in life. It shall be well with us in the mighty name of Jesus. If you would like to ask my wonderful guest, Minister Oluwato Oyewale, a question, please dial in into this number 0203774-7220 or um, type your message, your question on our platform on Facebook um, page of um, Safe Omega or Oluwashi Akishon Facebook page. Just type it in there. We will see it and read it out for her to read for uh, to answer our question. Please kindly also share with your uh, your families and friends. Probably many might not be on here while we are having this song. Please, if you share, they will later wash and be blessed with what we are doing. I pray it shall be well with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Kindly share on your platform to bless other people. Thank you so much and stay tuned. Back to you, man. Thank you for that wonderful experience of yours as you are um, joining um, forward on your on the on your um on how you discover your seed. You haven't yet told, tell me uh, the great seed in you. I asked earlier on that, how did you discover your seed and what exactly is your seed? I want you to please tell our viewers the main seed that God has deposited in you so that they will know the reason why we are here. Kindly please share your seed with our viewers, ma'am. The seed in particular is I would call it like uh, a, a, a seed of understanding bringing understanding to the body of Christ bringing um, under, understanding and spiritual deliverance to the body of Christ to the ignorance because um, even though um, I package it as a book, but the seed itself has to do with uh, a revelation of, uh, of subjects or things that Christians take for granted. Because it's more than just going to church. It's more than um, uh, I belong to a certain uh, parish. Because there is nothing of church in, in, in heaven. There is nothing of name of churches in heaven. We're going to meet Christ as individual. And with this, it is, it is going through our seed what... Uh, the Lord himself has given us. Okay. It is through this, as we develop it, 
that will bring that will, I mean that will give us the freedom, liberty on how to live a full life of our salvation here on earth. So with that, uh, I will, I will, my own speed, I will call it uh, revelation. Okay. I will call it a revelation. And a lot of us have this thing. We have this seed, you know. I'll give you an example. Like when a preacher or a pastor is teaching and congregations, we are there sitting down. I can assure you that like 40% of every one of us sitting down there, we are receiving what that pastor or what that preacher is preaching. We are receiving it in a complete different and higher form. That's right. But we, could, we cannot talk. We, we, we will not be able to speak out because we have seen anybody on the platform as higher and bigger than us. Which shouldn't be, but I allowed it in my life. I allowed it for several years because I feel like I know, even though I know that Holy Spirit is talking to me, he's talking to me, he's telling me, this is, this is, that is wrong, that is wrong, this is what to do, this is, uh, I mean, to the extent that he will give me the scripture to study for it. But the fear of, uh, what will my pastor say? What will all other people in the church say? How can I just be only me in the church and be saying, Ah, this is what the Bible says. No, it's not what the preacher is saying, but this is what the Bible says. That grip, I mean, that really, it, 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 it kept me down for long until the Holy Spirit himself will not give up on me, until he makes sure that, okay, if you cannot say it out, put it in the book, write it. And I wrote it, I mean, I published the book. Still, I did not put it to sell because I don't want it to look like uh, it, it, it's because of money. Everybody is in the business of money. And in some churches, you cannot, I mean, you cannot stand up as, a, I mean, as part of the congregation and say, you've written a book. Where are you going to sell it? Who is going to buy it from you? Because the pastor already has written 100 books That's that right. is, is saying that we must buy, we must buy, we must buy. Yeah. And all these books, they are not into my vision. Yeah. I'm reading them. They are like, the more I read them, the more they knock me down. Yeah. But the one that the Holy Spirit himself is telling me to write, you cannot write it and, I mean, and, Tell people in the church that this is the book. You can't even tell your pastor. So I'm talking in terms of my own bed, and I believe that it's also happening in some other people's lives. So I am taking this opportunity to tell us that if we have a dream or we have something like revelation of a, a certain subject that we study the scripture and we see the truth of it, from what is being preached, we must not hesitate to put it down. Even if we cannot, uh, if we cannot do the expense of publishing the book, yes. we must make sure that we find a way of bringing it out. Because for me, it was the oppression was too much, yes. and so to prove that it is not for money, I printed it. I did about 20, about three hundred copies to give it away. So in my giving it away, I didn't know that I was even making a big offense. So with that, I could not stay in the church. Um, I mean, I, I locked myself up and I was like, well, God, I don't think this is what I should do. And this is how I have always been. Then I resulted into listening to preachers online, picking some messages. I couldn't go any further. I couldn't be going to church because even though you go, they will laugh. They will, you will think they, that they are, I mean, you, you will feel it that the affection is not there. 
But for me, I have to do this. I, I mean, I couldn't be quiet. I, I'm seeing people laboring with their money and getting out to put this thing out there. And the Bible, I'm reading it. I studied the Bible. The Bible tells me that Gentiles are not to pay tithe. The Gentiles are the church. We are not to pay tithe. I wrote this thing out in, in my book with scriptures. The book is full of scriptures that prove. So with this, I went through a lot of persecution. That Hallelujah. No, <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much for that wonderful um, experience shared with our viewers. May God continue to renew your anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, uh, you made me to understand that you are an author, which is a book writer. You are a book writer through the Holy Spirit. I thank God for your life once again. It shall be well with you and more anointed in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, you said that uh, you received your revelation through the Holy Spirit and the Lord has asked you to speak out what you have received, which means the message the Lord has given given to you that you should say it to the world but because of fear of unknown because of fear of what people will say around you because of fear how will you as little as you are in the midst of thousands of pastors wherever you are you're unable to carry out this mission but God gave you an understanding of writing and that is that is um, what made you to write your book titled tightening isn't it yes Okay, glory to God Almighty. Now, I want you to tell me, how did you receive your inspiration? Okay, God has showed you the revelation on what to do. How did you receive that um, inspiration? Because uh, it is a different thing for you to receive that Holy Spirit or that message and stand up and speak in the midst of congregation. Thus says the Lord, do this. Thus says the Lord, do not do this. Thus says the Lord, do not go that way. Thus says the Lord, come this way. Um, it is easy to do that. How did you receive that inspiration of writing? Please share with our viewers, man. God bless you. Thank you. I receive it um, when I'm alone. Okay. Um, most of the time, when I'm just by myself, and in in here in the UK, I happen to be on my own. My family is back home. Even my husband, my eight, my children, my husband, my husband is, is going to. I mean, is going to be with the Lord now. But when he was alive, he told my children they were all back home. It was only me and myself here. Yeah. So I have that opportunity of. Being on my own in my room by myself. Okay. So, and the only thing I do is me and my Bible. Okay. People that knows me know that I don't go to party. It's me and my Bible. Okay. It's me and my Bible. Okay. So when it, it uh, and doing that, it's not that I take it as a religious something. I just want to be. I just. Want, want to do things the right way that this is what the bible says this is what the bible says even to the extent that time, that time when my husband was still alive when we are saying something on the phone she would say he would say okay i know what you're going to say now this is what the bible says okay let's let's leave that aside let's talk what the material thing we are seeing now is saying and i will laugh and say okay so that has always been my life. Um, so it, I would say it makes it more easier for the Holy Spirit to communicate with me. And so when I'm finding it difficult to say, hmm, this is wrong. We shouldn't be paying tithe. We shouldn't be giving tithe. We shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be... Then the Holy Spirit starts ministering to me that if you cannot stand that, in the church, you are, I mean, two masters cannot be in the pool. That's right. Okay. Yes, you cannot be standing side by side with your pastor and be saying your pastor is wrong. Holy Spirit does not even accept that. That's right. So, he gave me the idea that put it in writing okay. and publish the book. Okay. So, in publishing the book, I didn't even put it to sale. I was just giving it out 
for free, which I did within my within my church as well, and that really blew things out. That in, in fact, the teaching from the platform I could not stand it anymore, and it, it resulted into if anybody is not paying their tithe, they are not allowed to serve in the church. So not allowed to serve in the church, then I've become like an alien within my own family because the body of Christ is a family. Nobody wants to talk to me anymore. So with that, I have to leave. But I'm still I coming to that part of your experience and challenging. So I would like you to say that when I ask you about your challenging, then you can share that with our viewers. I will quickly um, acknowledge our viewers on the platform in order to carry them along with what we are doing. Please bear with me and I will get back to you very shortly. I have my wonderful mother, Alice B.C. Olatubos Mawomuti on the platform. Thank you for joining us, ma. God bless you. I also have Alaja Idayatu Muriano for Larry. Um, thank you, Elijah, for joining. God bless you, ma'am. I have my wonderful father in the Lord, Prophet Folai Ilori. Um, he also joined us. Thank you, sir, for joining us. God bless you, sir. I also have my wonderful sister and a friend, a good friend of mine, Bukola Ugu, on the platform. Thank you for joining, babe. God bless you. I have my beautiful evangelist, Yetunde Adeshino. She said, good evening, everyone. Good evening, beautiful mommy. Oluwashio. Happy New Month. Thank you, ma. Happy New Month to you and your family. God bless you, and thank you for supporting at all times. God bless you, ma. I have a um, wonderful apostle to Jeremiah Ajeki on the platform. I also have my wonderful brother, Bosun David. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you, sir. My love to family. I also have my wonderful Adenike Hali on the platform. And also, um, I share Oro Dim on the platform. Thank you all for joining. God will bless you. God will increase your anointing. And happy new month to every one of us. We shall celebrate new Thank year you. in good health and sound mind in the mighty name of jesus can i as well encourage you to please share this on your platform in order to bless other people this is a platform where we want to discuss on how we can discover the great seed of god in us which means there is something unique and special about every one of us god has deposited something very good in us but probably we might not even know or we are yet to discover that thing this is a platform where we want to talk about our other people experiences and share from their experience and see on how we can work on how on how whole seed, on how we can locate our seed and work on it. And I pray God we open our inner sight in the mighty name of Jesus. I also have my wonderful Shego Obafemi. He said, Happy New Month to be, I'm happy to be here. Oh, thank you, sir. God bless you, sir, for joining. Mr. Shego Obafemi, thank you for joining. And I pray God will bless you through this program in the mighty name of Jesus. Please kindly ask my wonderful guest a question. We, we, we can ask a question because we are here to learn from one another. Nobody knows it all. Type your question. If you cannot dial in, type it on the page. We will read it out for her to answer. And also, you can ring this number 0203774-7220 or 0794278530. You can ring in or you can as well type your answer on the page. We will read it out for her to answer. Sorry. Thank you, assistant. God bless you. Back to you, my wonderful um, pastor Oluwato Oyewole. I want you to now tell our viewers what exactly is your mission. I understand that you received that revelation through the help of Holy Spirit of um, by writing a book out to preach out the gospel on Titan, on how we can sow our Titan, on how we can do. Um, the do's and don'ts or about the about the tightening. I understand that. But what exactly is your mission in the journey of your of your sake? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. My mission is to let people know how to give, how to give, and not in pain or compulsory because. Um, the Bible tells us, according to um, 
If I may just explain this, yeah. that is the, the book of Galatians. If we take the book of Galatians plus the book of uh, um, Malachi chapter 3, because yeah. they use the book of Malachi chapter 3, which is verse 9 and 10. They use that a lot. Yeah. And I begin to wonder that the book of Malachi chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, tells us that if you do not pay your tax, yeah. you are under court. Yeah. Then Galatians tells me, chapter 3 tells me that Jesus Christ has become a cause for me. He has redeemed me from that cause of law and he has become a cause for me. Because anyone that, that died on the, on, on, on the tree is a cause. Oh, yes. So, where will that, where, how do, I mean, how do where we are balance we standing? that? Yes, <laughs> are, are we still in Malachi chapter 3 under a cause? Or am I now operating under Galatians 3? This, this is, I mean, I mean, this is something that even a seven-year-old child can explain. So I begin, this really moved me into action. Right. No. Even if, even if I don't understand anything, these two scriptures prove it to me. I am no longer under a cause. And if anybody would tell me that if I don't pay my tithe, I am under a cause, then it's either Jesus Christ is a liar or there is no God. Wow. And so many scriptures that I can prove that, that not at this moment. Okay. All these things is written in my book. I, I mean, every chapter is full of the scriptures. Because as, as the Holy Spirit was giving me this understanding, it's also leading me to scriptures that speaks on this. Okay. Is it where Paul said it in Romans chapter 11? Is it the one, is that, is it that one that we, we're going to pick yeah. and say, no, we, we, we are still paying tight? Because Paul said it in Romans chapter 11 that it is, it, it, it is because of the, it is because of the Gentiles that God actually put, I mean, made, I mean, made the, the Israelites to fall. Yeah. It is because the salvation can come to Gentiles. Yeah. Or is it Ephesians chapter 2 that we want to pick, that the Gentiles were called the uncircumcised? In yeah. fact, that Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 11 really explains it, that the Gentiles were called uncircumcised, strangers, so the covenant of promise, they have no hope. Okay. They are without God. So if the Bible says we have no hope before and we are without God, how can I be part of that law that was given tight at that time okay. if I don't know God? Okay. I don't have God. I, I, I am without God that time. How then was I being able to give my time with the Israelites that time. So all these things is just it's 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 a proof is so much proof in the Bible. I don't know how anybody can miss this. So this I, I'm using this platform this moment crying out from my heart. I am really crying out that my brethren in the church we should Please, take up our Bible, study, study. The Bible does not say we shouldn't give. We have to give. Even Jesus Christ tells us that it is more blessed to give than to receive. To receive, oh yes. We have to give. The scripture encourages us to give. Yeah. But not compulsorily giving tithe. Ties that we were no longer, we were never before part of it. Even Paul said it that he has to. He was he was made uh, the, uh, uh, the Gentiles uh, minister so that the the sacrifice of the Gentiles can be uh, can can be I mean can be sanctified because if they, if they give, I mean 
means they are, I mean, they are given will not be, will not be sanctified. It will not be taken because they were not of God. So Paul has to do that. Paul has to be their teacher to teach them and to make them understand the type of spirit they have now. They have the spirit of Christ in them now that, that uh, um, their offering can be sanctified before it can be accepted. The, 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 the giving that is being sanctified now in order to be accepted, how was it being given then as a tithe and it was accepted and now it's no longer accepted unless it is being sanctified? I am trying to let my people, brethren, have this understanding and stop getting carried away. It is not by giving your time that, that, that God will answer your prayer. Our prayer has already been answered. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ma. Thank you for that wonderful answer. So you are, uh, you made me to understand that your great mission is to preach to the brethren that God loves a cheerful giver, that we should try to be given. Even the Bible makes us to understand that. Um, Jesus asked his disciple that, um, no, the disciple was like, okay, when have, you, have we done this to you? And the Lord said, whenever you've done this to my brethren, to your neighbor, which is people on the streets, people in this prison, the homeless, or the uh, widow, or the needy, if you have done a good thing to them, you see someone that is naked, you cover them with clothes, or you see somebody that is hungry, you give them food, or, or you see someone that is thirsty, you give them water to drink. If you have done this to this brethren, you have done it unto Christ Jesus, according exactly. to the Bible. So I supported what you just said, that the Lord said he loved a cheerful giver. It does not yeah. matter that we wait for them to even ask us that, oh, uh, I'm waiting, I want that man or that woman to come to me before I know that I should give. If you see somebody around you that you know that you need to bless with anything that you have, please do, yep. especially as we are approaching this Christmas. <laughs> Even our Lord Jesus Christ was blessed with the three wise men. They went to search for him where he was. According to the Bible, they saw the star from the east and they went, they, they tried to look for where he was and they went there to bless him with the, the gifts. So it's good for us to give out to people and it's, it's, it's a blessing to be honest. It is a blessing for us sharing whatever we have. It might not be money, it might not be something too big. Even it could be just talking. It could be for you to just talk to motivate somebody that was so sorrowful. And it is something, you are sowing a seed. You are blessing life by doing so. I supported you that um, that your mission, in fact, it was so touching and I really love that, that it's for you to preach on how we can give to other people around us. God bless you, ma. I'm going to quickly um, acknowledge my wonderful people that just joined in. Um, I will get back to you shortly, ma. Um, wonderful um, evangelist Yetunde Adeshino. She said, uh, more strength, mommy. Amen, amen, amen in Thank Jesus' name. You. Thank you so much, ma. God bless you. I have my wonderful uh, brother, Okwayeni Abayomi. He said, good evening, sis. Me. Good evening, sir. Thank you for supporting always, for your encouragement, for your advice. I appreciate you, sir. God bless you and your family in the mighty name of Jesus. And also, evangelist, she said, remember to share and invite. God bless you all. Thank you, Ma. And she has well typed in the uh, Bible passage, Malachi chapter 3, verse 9 to 10, for us to be able to read and understand better. Thank you for doing that, Ma. God will encourage you more in the mighty name of Jesus. And she also prayed. She said, you will not fall down in Jesus' name. Amen. And you too, you shall never fall on the wayside in the mighty name of Jesus. I have my wonderful Oluwatumi. She joined as well. And also Apostle Jeremiah Adaki. I have him on the platform. And also Marian Adigwe Obafemi. He said, she said, I am glad to be here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining. May the Lord bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I have my wonderful boss on the platform, Shegu Okikiola Ati Jagula. Thank you, sir, for joining. God bless you, sir. And my wonderful mother in the Lord, prophetess, uh, 
Roquel Latif. She joined us. So I thank you, Ma, for joining. God, we honor you. I appreciate you, Ma. She said, yes, so we must all, we must, <laughs> yes, oh, we must all, we can, we mo I, can, I don't understand it, but I think she was trying to say, we must all do what we can to help others. Yes, we must all do what we can to help others. And she prayed that, more I know it's in my fresh grace to do great exploits in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Ma. I receive your prayer with the mighty Amen. Thank you. I appreciate you for joining. God will honor you in the mighty name of Jesus. Kindly please let us share on our platform just to proclaim gospel. Many might be somewhere waiting for us to share this to them so we can uplift them for wherever they are going through. Many might be depressed at this time, many might be worried, many might be sorrowful, but this little thing can turn their life around and we can make a change, we can make a better life for them by sharing on our platform. I pray God will support you and encourage you more to do greater things in the mighty name of Jesus. I just have my wonderful sister Bola Omodeli joining. Thank you, Ma, for joining. God bless you. If anyone have a question to ask my uh, wonderful guest, Minister Oluwa Toyi Oyewole on tightening, on how we can sow our seed, or on, on any question at all, I'm sure that she will be able to answer us. Please type in your question or call in into this number 0203 or 079-447-8530. Thank you and stay tuned. God bless you. Back to you, my wonderful minister, Toyi Oyewole. Thank you. As we are moving forward now, thank you for that experience shared. I really appreciate it. I want you to explain to me about your, um, how you survive your challenges. Because one thing is for you to discover your seed. And another thing is for um, a challenge to rose on the way of you discovering your seed or on how you want to achieve that goal that you have seen that, okay, this is what you want to do. This is the step you want to take. But there are some barriers. There are some challenges. How are you able to survive those challenges and here you are today, you are still moving forward, you are still able to write that book the Lord has placed in your heart to do. Can you please share with our viewers? God bless you, man. Thank you very much. Um, the way I would say uh, I went about it, it, to me, it looks natural, but it's more than that. The, the reason why it looks natural is because when God has given you a vision, uh, or a dream, or, or a speech in you, and you have to bring it out. The one that gave it to you knows exactly how you should bring it out. It says in the book of Jeremiah, he says, uh, before I come to you, I know you. Before I put you in your mother's womb, I have already ordained you and made you a prophet to the nation. So, if that is the case, he himself knows exactly how he will lead you and guide you into fulfilling that purpose. So, to me, I, even though I said it looks natural, but it's very, very, very painful. Because people that I look up to, like people that are supposed to know, people that are supposed to understand me, people that are supposed to support me, they are the ones that we get. Uh, I mean, where are you going to get to do that? I mean, if that looks like you are opposing your pastor, you better think twice. Okay. Then I begin to think, if this is true, if this is of God, this is surely, and it's not something that I'm actually struggling to do. I just left it that, well, it's not there is no acceptance for it. There is nothing I can do. But the Holy Spirit will not allow me to rest. Sometimes I will be crying. Like wow. a baby. I will be crying. That this thing is too much for me. I can't. That was when the Holy Spirit gave me the idea of putting it into writing. So I wrote it. That was in 2012. I wrote it. It's not like Anybody preaches it to me like uh, a titan in the church is wrong. Nobody preaches it to me. I was just receiving that conviction in my spirit. Okay. So I wrote it, and in writing it, 
scriptures were like being downloaded into my spirit. The Holy Spirit was just believing me, was just giving me scriptures, telling me some sentences of words. I would start the scripture, I would see it, then I'll put it there, I'll put it there, I'll put it there until I was able to make the book. Then I published it, that was in 2012. But still, I couldn't move on with it because there was no acceptance. And you know what it's like when you are in the midst of thousands of people and you are like you are on your own you are standing in it. so uh, that is to me it, it's not a funny experience at all so i end up distributing the book that people should understand people should know this this is scripture this is not my word as you are reading the book you are reading scriptures that the book is full of scriptures you are reading the scriptures that talks about it, that say this, that say that, that say this, that say that. Especially most, uh, mostly on causes and blessings. Even the blessings of Abraham, it was explained to me. The blessing of Abraham is the, the blessing. And the blessing that our preachers are telling us for this title in Malachi, if you read Malachi chapter 3, verse 9, you will see it there. It's a blessing. God refers to it as a blessing, not the blessing. But the scripture gave it to me, the blessing of Abraham, as the blessing. All the scriptures, I quoted it in the book. Look, it is the blessing that God has given us. And he says it that it, this blessing is going to come through the seed. And this is, is Jesus Christ himself. So all these things I explain, and um, it, there is no way I could sit them down and be explaining this to them because, I mean, the pastor cannot be there and I'm explaining this. So this gave me a little bit of worry. That, Holy Spirit, why are you telling me this when the pastor is there? If the pastor is supposed to teach this, tell the pastor, not me. So that was when he gave me the idea of putting this in the book. In written. So I gave the book out yeah. and still. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Ma, for sharing your challenges with us and how you overcome it. More anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. So you did not allow that uh, oppression of people or oppression of the pastor. And I, you did one thing that I really appreciate because the Bible said we should give honor to whom honor is due unto. You didn't say because you have that anointing of receiving that message. You want to by force now come out in a way that, okay, they must understand that this is what God has laid in my mind and I must preach this word to you people. Holy Spirit has spoke to you to put it in writing. Then you, print it, you printed it out and even give it out to people. I really appreciate that honor and i really appreciate that humbleness in you because you didn't see yourself as if okay you are now in um um in, in uh, equivalent to your pastor because your pastor is your pastor if and the bible said we should give honor to whom honor is due unto i appreciate that in your life may god continue to bless you in the mighty name of jesus instead of you using that medium to cause distraction in the church or division in the church you are able to use that understanding of written to write your book and publish it out even though there is this challenging even though people are like who asks you to even write the book who even beg you of giving us book but you still obey the word of the lord you still obey the commandment that okay this is the revelation i'm giving to you if you cannot come out to speak out, write it and give it out, and you have done that. God will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I think we have a question on the platform. Um, before I read out the question, let me quickly um, acknowledge some of our viewers that just typed in. Uh, my wonderful prophetess, Rokel Latif, said a loudest amen. And also she said, thank you to your guest minister. Kudos to her. 
May the Lord grant our grace for greater accomplishment in Jesus' Thank name. You. Amen. Thank you, Ma, and a big amen to that prayer. And she also said, Jeremiah 1, verse 5. And my wonderful brother, Shegun Obafemi, said amen to the prayer. And also our mother in the Lord, Prophetess Ronke Lati, wrote out the um, Bible verse, which is uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 9. Thank you, sir. I can say Mr. Felix Sholanke that joined in. Thank you. God bless you. Mother Roka Latif said, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah to yeah. God Almighty for his good, for his goodness, for his merciful upon us all. Great Hallelujah to him. Thank you, my God bless you. And my quest, um, a question on the platform from my wonderful brother, Okpayemi Abayomi. He said, my question to our guest is, we understand that it is not everybody that has the grace to hear the audible voice of God, or see vision. So what are other way God speak to people? How do we know? Okay, this message is, is a bit long. The, I think the question is in two parts. The first one is, We understand that it is not everybody that has the grace to hear the audible voice of God or see vision. That is one point. So what are the other way God speaks to people? That is one question. How do we know it's God that is speaking to you? Wow. What a wonderful um, question. Do you hear the question, ma'am? I did, I did, I did. Okay. Anybody from the platform can as well type the answer in or call in to share your own thought on this um, question. It's open to everyone. We are here to learn from one another. God bless you. Thank you. Yep. Back to you, Ma. Thank you. Um, thank you for that question. The only answer to that question is the word of God. Oh. The word itself. Because the book of John tells us that um, the word of God is God himself. Oh, yes. So, if we, it depends on how much we put ourselves into the word. So, when God is speaking, I would say in, in a different way, in, 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 if God speaks to us in a different way, it, that would come to maturity, but at the initial stage, it's through the word. That's why we need to know the word of God. We need to study. The Bible says, "Study to show yourself approved, not unto any man, but unto God Himself. Not even to yourself, but unto God, because when God speaks, that you know your left from your right, you know the scripture, then it will." it would be more easier for us to hear and to understand what God is actually saying. Because he will speak the scripture. And when it speaks, when it when God when the Holy Spirit brings the scripture from inside us, because it's going to be what is already inside. When he quickens that word from inside us, then from what we are hearing from other people, we will be able to say, hmm, Wait a minute. That the Bible says this, says this, says this. That is God speaking to us. Then, when we get matured in hearing God, that is when you will begin to use different things. Like, you might see somebody wearing blue dress, and your spirit will just speak it like, hmm. Going to be, um, going to have to get blue dress tomorrow. It's not necessarily means that God is speaking to you, but your spirit will be quick to speak it because you are getting matured in the things of the spirit. You are being sensitive. Then God will be able to use occasion and even other people. When people speak to you, the spirit will agree or disagree based on your maturity in the world. But initially, it has to be the word. Because it is the word of God that will confirm whatever you 
it or whatever you hear. Because for me, when I first started seeing them in the church, like, bring your tithe, if you don't do this, you don't do this. First of all, I don't like it. I'm like, people are being pressurized. People are being used as a slave. Then I begin to, when I begin to read my Bible, I, I started coming across it. Oh, so this is what the Holy Spirit was trying to show me, trying to tell me. Then I put more interest in study, study, study. Then I begin to discover. So the more I discover, the more I can no longer hold it. so much how we support what you just said that um, is the word we need to have that word in us even um in the book of um in the bible i don't know the particular verse and uh, chapter in the bible i know that there is where they tell us about the gift of spirit i think in the book of galatians chapter 6 the the gift of um of um uh, gift the gift of the spirit we have the uh, the gift of a uh, spirit and we have the gift of flesh in them if we are able to meditate in the word of the lord even in the book of joshua chapter 3 he said that this book should not depart from your hand meditate on it day and night so it means that the more we read the bible the more interpretation we get from the holy spirit and the more we move closer to god and if anybody come to us to say otherwise from what we are reading, our spirit will tell us, we will know, definitely. That is my home belief. Yes. I might be wrong to other people, but that is my home belief. We will know, definitely. I think we call it the spirit of discernment. If you have that spirit of discernment in you, know any other thing that they will say, you will know. You will know if they are saying the truth or if they are saying... If they are lying, you will know. You might not be able to challenge them because sometimes, because of embarrassment or because you don't want to look down on people talking about God says the Lord, you might just keep quiet, you might just be watching, but it does not mean that what they are saying is true. If God said go this way, you go that way. If, even if 100 people are going the other way, he has told you to go this way. It does not mean that 100 people are going the other way, you have to follow. The only voice we need to obey is the voice of the lord thank you my god bless you for that explanation i have additional um points to what you said my wonderful prophetess Ronke said that um we all need to have a personal relationship with god when god is speaking something in you when god is speaking something in you you will not allow you to rest until it's done and other people will one way or the other testify or encourage you to to follow directively to of god so she's trying to tell us that when the lord speak to you to do something your spirit will not rest especially if the if the thing is from the lord until you deliver that message until it is done then you will be at peace so that is one way for us to know that the lord is speaking to us not our own thought and then she also mentioned Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. Thank you, my God bless you. And then I have another um, point on the platform from Marian Adigwe Obafemi. She said, um, yes, if you can dedicate yourself or get addicted to the Bible, you will be able to know the right path. That's true. Thank you, Ma, for your contribution. God bless you. More wisdom, more anointing to every one of us. Um, the platform is still open for question and answer. If you have any question to ask my wonderful guests, please 
type it in or you call on 0203-774-7220. I believe all those points have answered your question, my wonderful uh, brother Okpayemi. I believe you, that point have answered your question. Thank you for that question. God bless you. As we are moving okay. forward, we will quickly go on a very short break. Then when we return back, we shall move into our interaction section. Uh, uh, the section is for us to ask questions randomly from the Bible. And then we, we throw the question to our guest. Um, and we time her at the same time. I'm going to time her maybe within one minute to answer three or four questions. And it's a very nice section where we want to interact with one another just to test the knowledge of our Bible, to just remind us what the Bible has tell us to do. Thank you and please stay tuned. <laughs> Here is a good information for everybody. Have the real test of fruit in different form at your parties, event, church program, or social engagement like wedding, birthday, conference in your house, and lots more. Fruit cocktails, fruit arrangement, fruit palm tree, smoothie, fruit basket decoration, fruit kebab, and lots more at Sweet Art Fruit Company. Penny, ni bobo biti abatin shiari ya igbe ya wo ojo ebi ajodu ile ijosin ni bi afe tabi bi igbadu ati be be lo e ka si sweet art fruit ni eyi ke yo nte ba fe ki won fi fruit dalara fun yin bi fruit cocktail fruit arrangement fruit palm tree smoothie fruit basket decoration ati be be lo ni bi ki bi ti e ba wa e le ka si wa lori ero e ba ni soro yi 0794427830 or follow us on facebook twitter instagram and all social media platform at sweet art fruit oluwashun akisho is the CEO of Sweet Art Fruit. Patronize us at Sweet Art Fruit today. You will be glad you business with us. a platform where we are discussing the great seed of God in us and we are also encouraging one another on how we can locate the great seed of God in us. Please stay tuned. I have my wonderful guest on the platform which is Minister Oluwa Toyin Oyewole. She's here sharing her experience and challenges on how she discovered the great seed of God in her. Please stay tuned. And if you have a question to ask her, please call on 0203-774-720 or 079-472-7830. Now, um, back to you, Ma, as we are moving forward to our interaction section. You have just, um, you have just three, you have um, four questions to answer in the space of 60 seconds. And your time starts, let me set your time. Yeah, your time starts now. Are you hearing me, ma'am? I'm ready. Okay, ma'am. What was the first miracle Jesus performed? It turned water into. Sorry, I can't hear you, ma'am. It turned water into wine. Okay, the second question is, how old, how old was Jesus when he performed the first miracle? Sorry, how what? How old was Jesus when he performed the first miracle? The third question, 
which among the apostles told the early Christians that all believers are anointed by the Holy Spirit? Which among the apostles told the early Christians that all believers are anointed by the Holy Spirit? Hello, are you listening? Yes, I am, I am. Okay. That's Peter. Okay. Your time stopped now. The first question was, um, what was the first miracle Jesus performed? And then you answered that uh, he turned water into wine, which is right. And this question, the second question was, how was Jesus, how old was Jesus when he performed the first miracle? You didn't answer that one. 30 years. Pardon? I'm not sure. I think it's 30 years. I didn't hear you, ma. I think it, it was 30 years. I wasn't sure. I'm not sure. It was 30 years, but you didn't even answer it at the space of your time. <laughs> and the last question was, which among the apostles told the Holy Christian? that all believers are anointed by the Holy Spirit? That was the last question. And you said Peter. Yes. You are wrong, ma. It was Apostle Paul. Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. It was Apostle Paul. Thank you, ma, for sharing your knowledge with us. God bless you, ma. Thank you. Now, moving forward regarding the book that you wrote, titled Tightening. Earlier on, I was asking that, how did you receive your inspiration of writing the um, book? And you said that it was through the Holy Spirit in the revelation. And then you are able to put this in writing and publish yes. it out. Please, yes. I want you to show this book to our viewers and where they can as well get it. Because many might be willing to, to get this book. As you said, it's even full of the scriptures. It's full of the scriptures. It's not that... Yes. Book to the people for them to see. On, uh, for them to see. And also, um, I want you to please tell our viewers on how they can get this book. I don't know if you have it on Amazon or any shop that they can get it from. Okay. Um, do you want me to show it? No, the, we're okay. going to show it right from here. I'm just saying that you should let our people know where they can get it from. In All right. Case anybody um, would like to get it. Okay. I have uh, a load of copies with me that are just ordered. Because some people order this from me, which they find more easier. But some people go on Amazon. You can get it's the same, it's the same price. You can get it from Amazon and you can also get it from me or from the publisher itself from America. showing on our screen tightening titled tightening this is all about how we can give to in our hands for us to use it to bless other people around us. From the publisher and from USA, she said, or if you are willing to get it, just send me a message on my Five three zero. 
then I will um I will let you know how it will reach you. I will definitely of unknown which you experienced in the past and God has given you that boldness to overcome it I want you to advise our viewers that are watching especially how they can locate their seed on how they can nurture and grow their seed in order to use it for this word positive please try to share your um, advice with our viewers. God bless you, ma'am. Thank you. I would like to encourage uh, our people that if you have everyone, I believe every one of us has faith in us. Everybody, every one of us that God created to this earth came with faith. Now, to discover it, and to bring it into the soil in order to germinate and bring life to other people because that is what seed is for. Seed is to give life to people. So in order to give life to people around you, you must be able, I, I use must because sometimes we will, might, we will relax in our comfort zone and let Fear grip on. No, we must make sure that I, I come with a seed. Mm. God brought me to this earth with a seed. And the, as you are discovering what you like doing or what you see doing or what is in you that you are seeing that should be corrected, most especially it comes from what you see other people doing that is wrong and you think it should be corrected, then begin to search yourself. That, Am I the one that God is given the gift to be able to correct this situation? Begin to search yourself. Then begin to lock yourself up with God and begin to ask, what is my gift? What can I do about this situation? Then you begin to discover. And as you are discovering, you might, you might see that, uh, I mean, the people that surround you, begin to like ignore you or hate you for it that why do you have to bring that up why do you have to change that why do you have to that is when you will realize that this is something that i must do then i will encourage you to put more courage into it and even the holy spirit himself will not allow you to rest he will not allow you to rest he will put that burden on you that you will be crying that lord as i can't do this, I don't even know how to do this, but because I know it is from you, it is you speaking, make a way. This book that I told you, that I wrote in 2012, I pushed it aside because nobody was asking for it, nobody wants to see me, nobody wants to see me with it. Like, why do you have to be the one to correct pastors? Things like that. Until this year, this year, January, that the Holy Spirit woke me up again, that this has to be done. You have to. So I put it back into public, um, publishing uh, uh, existence that I have to revise it. I put it into revised standard version. I go through it and I study it again. I add more scripture to it with more understanding. So it gives it more volume. It is now that I am able to come out with it. Because the Holy Spirit will not allow you to rest. So I'm encouraging you. Don't let your seed die. Because there's a lot of people that would benefit from it. There's a reason. There's a purpose why God gave us seed. Seed is for people to eat and live. There are a lot of people that are dying because your seed is not getting to them. So be encouraged. And the Lord is strength.
under the carpet they are not using many are dying for it oh my god that is that word is so powerful more anointing more blessing to you thank you for your great advice i really appreciate um our wonderful minister Oluwatoyin Oyewole, she's here advising us that whatever give god has given unto us we should be encouraged to use it even at the start of it people will question us people will hate us especially people around you because you are doing something new that they have never used uh, seeing you doing before definitely they will question you they will hate you for it they will nag on you they will do all sort of things to discourage you but she said do not stop even in the bible if we remember aaron aaron was the one that we lift um, moses hand. he got to a point uh, uh, aaron and then miriam they are like don't we have that anointing that he got we do have that anointing so they, yeah. they, they do plant evil against him, you know. So definitely, people around you, it might be your immediate family that will hate you for the gift of God in you. But it does not matter. Just keep pushing forward. Do not stop because many are dying because of your seed. Many are worried because of your seed. If you are encouraged to use your seed to bless their life, you are changing life. So why can't yeah. we be a change agent for this world? Why can't we be a change agent for even the kingdom of God? Because the Bible makes us to understand that when a sinner turns to repentance, the heaven are rejoicing. So for you and I to use our gift, we are imparting kingdom of God. It shall be well with you, man. Thank you for that great advice. Our wonderful mother prophetess, Ronkel Latif, said, More anointing to you both. May the Lord Thank multiply you, your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank Amen. Thank you, man, for that wonderful prayer. God bless you, man, and more anointing. I appreciate you for joining and for your comments, for your contribution. God bless you, man. God, we honor you once again. And as we are moving forward now, I would like you to quickly share your testimony with our viewers you told us about your experiences about your challenges i want people to listen to your testimony because your testimony can change life kindly share with our viewers ma ah my my testimony i would say is actually the key to this program honestly wow. because people have been saying that yes he said type type is is you know it's longer for the church and all what we have they, they didn't tell me that the bible says they all they were saying is that all what the preachers everywhere are saying is if you don't pay your tithe you will not get food to eat there will be no food on your table there will be no this no that in your pocket but from the very moment i say yes that this is wrong. From the very moment I start seeing that the Bible says it, I never laugh. There, there has never been a time that I run out of money. I never, I never borrow money. It is these people that will still come to me and say, so you, can you please borrow me so, so, so amount? I'm like, I'm not paying my time, but I wouldn't tell them that. I will just give them. I don't even lend them. I will just give them because I see them as they need to understand. So I will just give them. Money has never left my account. Even as I, as I am here, there are so many things that I am carrying back home financially in my family. And I'm not paying my tax. Ever since. I wrote that book, to the, the first time I wrote it was 2012. And I started getting the, 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 the revelation about three years before then. Since then, I've stopped paying tithes and I have never run out of money. Never. I never face anybody to borrow money. I don't, I don't have to borrow. I don't, I, <laughs> honestly, it's really, it, it, it's a key to my calling, it's a big testimony to me because it really proves to me that truly, 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 this is coming from God. Because if it's not of God, it, I mean, it, it would have 
Satan would have messed me up. Okay. I would have been on the street and it would have been like, yes, he told you. Okay. I, I will, I'm also, I mean, I'm the person that is even lending money to them. Okay. And all these things, because the scripture says this, it's plain, clean, clear from the scripture to scripture, from scripture to scripture. Okay. So that also gave me the confidence, the boldness that, no, I am not going back to this. Gentiles must not pay time. I am not in that accord. And the blessing, the blessing of Abraham is mine. And it has always been mine. And it will always be yours and it will be for every one of us that we need to be. explanation on your testimony. God bless you, man. As we are rounding up, ma, I wonder if you have anyone you would like to appreciate in the journey of your life, people that have ever supported you, uh, people that encourage you, people that influence your life. Kindly appreciate someone, ma. Thank you. Um, I have a to God Almighty, um, our wonderful minister, Lua Tony Oyewole, she's here appreciating everybody for her, for their great support in her life. She said thank you and well done also to um, the wonderful children of our mother. She said thank you for your support, for your encouragement, even though you don't understand what she's doing, but yet you supported her. She said a big thank you to you. Um, I would like to bring the program to an end now. While I will once again appreciate all my wonderful fans, my wonderful viewers that joined in and people that have even left the platform at this moment, I say a big thank you to you. Till next week that we meet again, I remain loyal to you on the platform tag, a Sydney show, Akisha. God bless you and stay tuned. Wow, wherever you might be watching me from all over the world, a warm greeting to your heart. My name is Shion Akishon. I'm using this medium to introduce to you a powerful program on Safe Omega Media. Titled, A Seed in Me, A Seed in Me, A Seed in Me. What is that seed in you that is yet to discover? Join me on this program to discuss on how we can discover the seed in us. A seed that can allow you to shine in life. According to the book of Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 says, 
arise and shine for your glory has come without you discover the seed in you you can never shine without you knowing how to grow your seed you can never shine without you knowing how to nurture your seed you can never shine without you knowing how to use your seed to impart life positive you can never shine join me on every wednesday at 6 p.m prompt on facebook live at safe omega media thank you and god bless you but tell a friend to tell a friend thank you